Hi everyone, uh, this is the next episode of Lunch Series. Today we're going to be talking about the Finality gadget that we call Casper NFG, which stands for uh, Nightshade, Nightshade Finality gadget. Uh, quick introduction on what Finality gadget is and why we need it. Uh, say we have a blockchain uh, where block are blocks are produced. Uh, so the way the schedule on which blocks are produced is quite orthogonal to the Finality gadget, so is the, fin the, the fork choice rule. Uh, specifically for the Casper NFG, it is important that every block has an associated weight. So the concept of a weight is uh, external to the finality gadget. Uh, it could be amount of proof of work, it, it could be something related to proof of stake, but it should be some integer. It doesn't have to be integer, but it should be some, uh, some number which increases with every block. Cool. Uh, whenever a block is produced, uh, we also define a set of, uh, let's call them uh, witnesses, or we call them block producers, but for the sake of this video, we're going to call them witnesses. Uh, participants who observe the network and, and sign on the blocks. Uh, whenever a, uh, there's, there's a total of n witnesses. Uh, and whenever uh, a witness observes a new block, uh, they can create an approval. Where approval, uh, I usually draw it as an arc, uh, has uh, a parent block. So the block which, uh, uh, or rather like the block which is being approved, we call it a parent block. And also has another block called the reference block. Uh, the semantic of the reference block we will cover in a second. So right now in our uh, in our current implementation, the parent block must immediately precede the block that contains the approval. Uh, but that that requirement we don't rely anywhere on that requirement. It's just an implementation detail. So in general, in the future, it could be that uh, approvals uh, with a particular parent block are not included in the in the block that immediately follows, but are included later. Uh, there are a few requirements for the. Uh, in a second, we will define another property of a block. So we already defined the weight of a block, or rather, we did not define it, but we said it's external to the to the finality gadget. In a second, we will define another concept called the score of a block, which is another integer associated with the block which is not decreasing uh, between blocks. So for two approvals uh, of a particular witness, uh, there are two rules. Rule number one: if two approvals have the same reference block. Uh, then the blocks, the parent blocks, must be on the same chain, or otherwise it's a slashable behavior. So what I just drew is a slashable, is a slashable behavior because there are two blocks, two, diff two parent blocks which are not on the same chain with the same reference block. That's a slashable behavior. You cannot do that. Uh, but for example, something like this would have been appropriate for the same, for the same witness. Uh, if, the, if the reference blocks are different, then we require that for two approvals, Uh, the so let's call it uh, R two. So we, we call we call the parent block P reference block R. So this is R two P two. This is R one P one. We require that either P one, the weight of P one, is less than weight of R R two. And uh, the score of P one is less than the score of R two, or the other way around. Make sense? So two approvals must not intersect in either score or, or weight. And moreover, they have to be, weight and score have to be on the same side. So it is not okay not to intersect on weight in y direction and not to intersect on score in another. It, it has to be in the same, right? So either both as score and weight of one parent block bigger than of another reference or the other way around. So those are two conditions. Uh, the behavior of an honest block producer, the expected behavior is the following. They, they maintain, uh, for every chain, then they maintain the last approval they've made. Uh, and uh, they also maintain the largest weight and the largest score that they ever had on their parent block. And so their behavior is when they see a new block, uh, if the largest weight and score that they ever approved happens to be the weight and the score of the last approval on this chain, that, could, that would only be the case if, uh, if, that was their, uh, if this is their last approval. They cannot possibly have another approval on another chain uh, which, ha which, ha which has a bigger weight or score. That makes sense, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be the largest. In this case, they just create approval with the same reference block. Uh, and if the last approval on this chain has a, has a, has a weight and score of a parent, parent block which are less than the largest that uh, the witness ever uh, created, uh, then they would only approve if the parent, they would only create an approval, first of all, if the parent block has a weight and score higher than the last that they created. And they will just choose the, 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 the rightmost block that has weight and score higher than the, the largest they approved. Makes sense, right? Cool. Okay. 
Uh, now, the, we introduce two concepts. Concept number one, uh, we call a particular block. So, so we, we always look from perspective of a particular chain. So there's a tip we uh, call, we're gonna t call T. So from perspective of a tip, there's a chain. Uh, we say that a particular block has a quorum pre-vote, quorum pre-vote, if there's more than two thirds of uh, witnesses for whom there is an approval where the parent block is this block or something in the future, and the reference block is this block or something in the past. Make sense? So effectively, effectively, whenever you issue an approval uh, with some parent block and some reference block, you are testing to all the blocks in this range inclusive. And so if a particular block has more than two thirds of attestations, it has a quorum pre-vote. Uh, and we specifically, uh, we call a block, uh, so, so, so let's call it, so let's say this is block B. Uh, the block, the first block, which has uh, quorum pre-vote on B, we're gonna call it QV of B. So QV of B is the first block. Wait, wait, Alex, how is the reference block chosen for like a, a given block? I just went through that, right? A reference block is a, is a property of an approval. A reference block of an approval is chosen by the block, by the witness. Uh, if the last approval they made was on the same chain, they will choose the same reference block as last time. If it was on a different chain, they will choose... Yeah, the... but is, is there a reason that you, if it's in the same chain, you would choose the same uh, reference block? So you might, uh, you might choose like the, the, the parent block. So, so you, you can introduce some economic incentives to choose that. No, I mean, I guess what is the re like, is there like a, is there, is there like sort of random or is there like a, like a reason to prefer to use the... Well, well, let's say your reward is proportional to the length of your approval, oh, okay? So, so you have some incentive to choose reference block as far to the past as possible. Cool. Uh, so we call the block, the first block, which has a quorum pre-vote on B, QV of B, quorum pre-vote of B. Uh, a particular, uh, we say, let, let's move here a little bit to the right. We say that a particular block has a quorum pre-commit on B. If there are two thirds of approvals, such that the approval surrounds both B and QV of B. Okay, so it's not enough to have two thirds of approvals just surrounding QV, QV of B. That would not create a quorum pre-commit on B. Does that make sense? We need to have two thirds of approvals which, which surround both. Okay. Uh, under normal circumstances, if the, if the approvals are not skipped, what would it mean is that uh, this block is pre produced, the very next block will have two thirds of people having approvals uh, with parent block here and reference doesn't matter where, so the block will immediately get quorum pre-vote, right? And on the very next block, there are gonna be two thirds of, of approvals going like this. This is gonna be quorum pre-vote, this is the block, so you get quorum pre-commit on two blocks. And the block that has a quorum pre-commit is final, right? Uh, Okay, what we did not define is the score of the chain. The score is defined very, very easily. For a particular block, uh, you identify the rightmost block, the most, the most recent block which has a quorum pre-vote on it, uh, and the weight of that block is the score of the chain. Make sense? So from perspective of this block, if this is block, uh, if B is the larger, if the, if the most, is, is the most recent block for which quorum pre-vote exists, then the score of, of this block, the score of T is the weight of B. Make sense? Okay, so let's quickly go through the safety proof. Uh, uh, so let's say... See, see, one question. So every block is, like every member of the quorum is supposed to vote on approvals uh, on yes. every block? Like uh -huh. they're, they're yeah. like allowed to vote for approvals on every block? Yes, they don't have to. It's okay if they skip an approval, right? Uh, but they, they are expected to provide approvals as frequently as possible with the reference block going into the past as far as possible. So why not always uh, give approval for the oldest block like a long, long time ago? What's the problem with that? Oh, you can know, so, so right now in the current implementation, you, you can only provide approval for the very previous block. Reference, if, if you go, ideally, yes. Ideally, if there's only one chain, you will always use Genesis as your reference. Right. But if there are multiple chains, if there's another chain, uh, and at some point that chain, like let, let's say this is Genesis, and like for a while people were creating approvals. And at some point this chain becomes heavier. Uh, we're, not, we're not gonna go through how it can become heavier. It can, right? Uh, it's, it's easier to prove safety when it exists than, not, than to prove lack of safety when it doesn't. But there's no safety without, uh, unless something is finalized. So some chain becomes heavier. You do want to start creating approvals on this chain because this chain is gonna win. Your approvals on this chain will not give you any reward now. But you cannot go all the way back to Genesis because you will trigger slash will behavior your approvals will have the same reference block or they will intersect. 
Right, so at that point, you, you will, like, your first approval will go here, and every consecutive approval will also go here, right? So effectively, you will always go as far to the past, not to trigger a slashable behavior with another chain that exists uh, where you created an approval before, right? Okay. So the main chain will stop because it is not receiving approvals anymore, and the second chain will win because it is receiving approvals yes. more. Yes, but, but for that, the second chain already had to start winning for some reason, yeah. right? Okay, so let's prove that the, so let's say this block is final. Let's prove that never a block with a higher weight will get a quorum pre-vote. Right, so, the, so this block, let's call it B1. Uh, let's say there's another block, B2, which has a higher weight. Uh, and let's say it did get a quorum pre-vote. So if it got the quorum pre-vote, this chain will get a higher score, hypothetically. It could get a higher score. If never a block with a higher weight gets a quorum pre-vote, you will never get a score higher than, than this chain. Because by definition, if B1 has quorum pre-commit, that means that there was a block with quorum pre-vote, right, QV. Uh, and then two-thirds of people saw that block because they approved something to the right. So from perspective of those people, the score of this chain is at least the weight of B1 because they saw quorum pre-vote on B1, right? Uh, and so for this chain to overtake, its score needs to be higher than B1. For that, another block with a score higher than score of B1 needs to get a quorum pre-vote. So let's show that another block cannot get a quorum pre-vote. Uh, let's say it's not the case. Let's say there is actually a block uh, QV uh, on, uh, on B2. Sorry, let's put it. This one is a QV on B1. Uh, and also there's somewhere block, which is QC on B1, because B1 is final. So consider all the approvals uh, which made B1 to be a quorum pre-commit, right? Those approvals surround both, uh, and, and let's just look at one approval, right? So from perspective of, there's at least one witness, because there's two thirds of, more than two thirds of witnesses uh, who surround both QV and B1 with an approval and more than two-thirds of witnesses who surround B2 with an approval, there's, there's at least one, assuming less than one-third is malicious, that has both. Let's just consider them. Right, so they have some approval here. Uh, and so my, my picture is not very, very good, but it doesn't have to be that this is to the left from, here, from this. It could be that they... Moreover, they must be uh, separated, right? Let me actually change it so that it's clear. So this is B2. This is QV of B2. And there's an approval which goes something like this. Okay. Uh, uh, the <clears throat> notice that because uh, because this approval uh, for quorum pre-commit surrounds both quorum pre-vote and and the block itself, then the score of the parent block is at least weight of B1. Make sense, right? So so let's call this uh, P1 P uh, R1. P2, R2. So we know that score of P1 uh, is at least, uh, it's greater or equal to the weight of, uh, of B1, right? Uh, we also know, uh, because there's no slashable behavior happening, uh, we, we know that weight of B2 is greater than weight of, B, of B1. That's by assumption, right? That's, we're proving that this is impossible, so to prove, to, to prove by contradiction, we're assuming that this is the case. Uh, that means that because P2, because B2 is the, in the ancestry of P2, that means that weight of P2 is greater, and R1 is in the ancestry of B1, uh, greater than uh, weight of R1. Does this make sense? Like, be because the weight of B2 is greater than weight of B1, that naturally implies that weight of uh, P2 is greater than, uh, than weight of P1. Uh, now, because those two intervals do not intersect, that also implies that weight of R2 is greater than weight of P1, right? Wait, uh, Alex, is uh, weight are monotonically non-decreasing? Weights, mon weights are increasing. Yeah. Uh, so some of those could be greater or equal. That's, uh, it, they, could be, they could be off by one errors. Um, uh, okay, so, so weight of R2 is bigger than uh, then weight of uh, P1. Uh, okay, let me think again for a second. From that, it, it means that, uh, again, from the, because for approval, weights and scores have to be on the same side, it also means that the score of R2 is greater than the score of P1. Mm -hmm. So the last thing we discovered is that score of R2 should be strictly greater than score of P1. But we also know that the score of P1, we started from that, is at least the weight of B1. Uh, and so this is uh, this is strictly greater 
uh, which means that the score of R2, score of R2, is strictly greater than the weight of B1. But that means that there is a block uh, that from perspective of R2, from perspective of this block, there is a block in its ancestry uh, with a quorum pre-vote which has a weight bigger than B1. So, so there's another block like B2 somewhere here. And like you understand, it cannot happen infinitely, right? L like by induction, we will say, oh, that, th that means that in the ancestry, there's another block like that. In the ancestry, there's another block like that. Right? Or, or like even easier, we could have said that B2 is the smallest, the block with the smallest weight. Right? And then we would immediately arrive to the contradiction that the block with the smallest weight bigger than B1 has another block in its ancestry uh, with clearly weight even smaller. Right? Okay, so that's, that's the safety proof effectively, uh, which shows that uh, if, if a block has quorum pre-commit, it cannot get, um, <clears throat> no other block will ever have a quorum pre-vote with, with a higher weight. Cool. So the quorum pre-vote is the finality condition. So the finality is having quorum pre-commit, but quorum pre-vote defines the score. And, and so I, I spent quite a bit of time yesterday running uh, a lot of stress tests and uh, I was trying to replace small pieces. So for example, if I replace, so I have a test which which would stress a lot of graphs and make sure finality safety never violates. If I replace the score with, with, the, with the weight of quorum pre-commit, it immediately finds the graph where, where safety would be violated. If, like if you replace any small part, safety gets violated, but with this particular rules, it's, uh, it works. Okay, so now quick implementation details. Uh, effectively, we need few things to implement that to work. So one I already discussed, right? How do we, give, how do we compute our approval, right? So for every chain, uh, for every chain, we remember the last approval on the chain, right? So for every block with the block, we just store the last approval from us on that chain that ever, that ever happened. Uh, and when we receive a new block, to choose an approval, we, we look at the last approval happened on this chain. We also know the last approval overall that we've ever made. And we see if our last approval overall is on this chain, we use the same reference block. And if it's on a d different chain, we know the weight and height, uh, the weight and score of the last block, right? And we just use the largest block on this chain the, the, sorry, the most, the least recent block on this chain, which has higher weight and higher score. Uh, so this is not how it is implemented right now. Right now, if I switch chains, I just use parent block as a reference block, uh, which that doesn't hurt much, but you're missing on rewards, right? Okay, second thing we need to do is we need to slash people when they, uh, when they create double, double, double signs. Uh, so the way I do that is uh, for every, whenever we see Effectively, the goal here is not to slash for any slashful behavior. The goal here is to slash for every behavior which might tamper with finality, right? Because slashing in the first place exists so that people cannot do damage. If some action is slashable but could not possibly do damage, it, we don't have to slash for that. It wouldn't hurt to slash for that, but we don't need to have that logic. So the way I do that is, uh, well, assuming, assuming that, final, that safety never actually gets violated and the finalized blocks actually form a chain, for every final block, uh, whenever, whenever I see a new block uh, getting finalized, it, it will always be built on top of some other finalized block. Uh, for every approval which contributed to this block getting finalized, so for every approval that surrounds uh, both, both the block and the, and the QV of that block, uh, I memorize, I remember for that particular participant that approval. So I have, a, I have a table indexed by the participant, by the witness, where for every witness I remember the last approval that I used from them to finalize a block. And whenever I receive a new approval from them, I will always, I will only create a challenge if the new approval I receive conflicts with this approval. But I don't care if it conflicts with any approval from the past. Does that make sense? Because they would only, they would only tamper with finality if they managed with some of their approvals uh, to revert this block. To revert this block, they clearly need an approval which conflicts with the, with the latest, with the latest approval I received from them. So that's how it's built right now. Well, I guess that's how it's planned to be built right now. Um, okay, finally, the most interesting part is how to actually compute quorum pre-vote and quorum pre-commit. Uh, the way I do that is uh, I do it in linear time, which I think is uh, slightly suboptimal. So effectively, whenever I receive a new block, in the worst case, I will traverse all the way back to Genesis. Uh, so I, I will explain how it works right now, and then we can quickly cover how it can be sped up. Uh, so effectively, to find quorum pre-vote is very simple. Uh, first thing we need to observe is that it is impossible for the same participant to have two approvals of this form. That makes sense, right? Such that one is fully encompassing another, uh, uh, where these are not equal to each other, right? So that's, that's the first observation. Uh, and if this does happen, 
I, I have like some protection in case someone maliciously created such thing. But in general, let's assume it never happens, right? So what I do is uh, I go from right to left, and for every participant, for every witness, I remember the 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 furthest height to which they approved, right? So like I have this hash map, let's call it a uh, uh, witness to height, where for every witness I, I know the, the, the least recent height to which their approval goes. Uh, and so, and also for every height, uh, I, I know all the witnesses who, who go all the way down to that height, right? And then finally, I maintain an, uh, effectively an integer, which says like how many, how many approvals are surrounding the current block. Make sense? Let's call it total approvals. Okay, so quorum pre, quorum pre, pre vote is trivial. We go from the block. Uh, for every approval, we update. Uh, first of all, we've already had some approval before. We will remove it from both of those mappings. That's easy. Uh, we will add it to those mappings. Uh, and uh, if we didn't have approval from that person, and now we do, we will increase total approvals, right? Uh, and then for every approval which was going only all the way to this height, we will remove them from the uh, from the approvals and decrease total approvals by that number. And if that number is more than two thirds of witnesses, that the block has a quorum pre-vote. Right? Because effectively we maintain the number of, to of total approvals that surround the block. That makes sense? Cool. Uh, quorum pre-commit is a little harder, but also not very hard. Effectively, as I go to the left from, from the last block, uh, I maintain uh, a pointer to the, to the first block for which I do not have two thirds of, of approval surrounding it. Okay, so, so, so if total approvals is less than two thirds, that would be the current block, that makes sense, right? Because no block has two thirds surrounding, right? So at the beginning, I start, uh, I call it H, H points to, to the current block because there's no approvals. Uh, but the moment I have two thirds of them, uh, H, H will be pointing, so like that could be current block, let's call it C, but H could be pointing to something before the current block. That means that for every block, for current, for this one, uh, there are two thirds of approvals. It also means that all of them will have quorum pre-vote on them. Uh, but this is the first block, for which from perspective of C, there is no two thirds of approvals. Maybe as I go to the left and I add more approvals, H will get two thirds of approvals, but right now it doesn't, okay? Uh, so H, you can easily show that as long as approvals are never nested, H can only go to the left, right? Because I would only, uh, whenever, like if for some participant, there's an approval that goes to the left, uh, because there are no nested approvals as I go to the left, for that participant, approval can only go further. It can no, never go closer. So all the all the approvals that currently surround uh, the block right after H, uh, they can only only become longer. They can never become shorter. And so this block, if it has right now two thirds of approvals surrounding it, it will never have less than two thirds, right? And so H can only go to the left. And maintaining H is not super hard. Uh, effectively, whenever I process an approval, if before it was ending to the right from H and now it ends to the left from H, then H then I increase the number of uh, of approval surrounding uh, this block, right? Uh, and then if it if it exceeds two thirds, I move I move h to the left. Does that make sense? And, and when we move h to the left, so so here's one. So so let's say so for this block. Oops. So I know for h. So so I have another constant which says total surrounding h. Uh, so the moment total surrounding H exceeds two thirds, that means that H is not properly pointing. I need to move it to the right. But I also need to compute the, the new total surrounding H. But that's very easy because I know exactly how many approvals end here, right? I have it in this uh, H to uh, two witnesses I will need to remove. So I just subtract this in, this number from total surrounding H. I get the new total surrounding H as H moves one one spot to the right. So this way I can maintain H. So how H helps me? Well, whenever I observe a block, if that block has a quorum pre-vote, right, so, so total surrounding is two-thirds. I, I say, from the perspective of this block, what was the latest pre, pre, quorum pre-vote, quorum pre right? And if that latest quorum pre-vote is after H, well, that block gets quorum pre-commit. Does that make sense? So for this block, back in the day, when this block was processed, we computed the quorum pre the, the the latest block, the most recent block, which has quorum pre-vote from its perspective, right? So for this block, like in the header, it has like sort of most recent, let's call it most recent quorum pre-vote, uh, which points to some block. Like what is, when this block was the pip, what was the most recent block which had quorum pre-vote, right? I, and so whenever I go, uh, whenever I compute quorum, most recent quorum pre-vote and most recent quorum pre-commit for this block, I go to, from, from right to left. And whenever for a particular block, I get quorum pre-vote, meaning the total, total approvals 
total surrounding approvals is uh, two thirds plus one, I say, is this most recent quorum pre vote from perspective of this block to the right or to the left from H? If it's to the right from H, that means that right now I have two thirds of approvals that surround both this block and this block because they all I didn't I didn't add yet approvals which uh, which are to the right to, to to the left. I will add them as I go to the left, right? So only only from the approvals which I added on the right, I have two thirds which surround all the blocks to the right from H. Does that make sense? Right, and so whichever block has mo most recent quorum pre-vote from perspective of this block, if it's to the right from H, that block has quorum pre-commit. Uh, the only thing that is left to show is that the very first quorum pre-commit I find is actually the most recent one, right? So like something that, that could happen uh, is that if I, if I look from perspective of this block, then quorum pre-commit will be here. But if I go to the left, maybe quorum pre-commit will be somewhere closer, right? Uh, that can never happen. Uh, because that would imply that some block to the left from this block has a quorum pre-vote which is more recent. Uh, but it's, it's very easy to show that quorum pre-votes, they, they, only, they only go to the left, uh, right? Because, uh, I mean, it, it's obvious. If from perspective of this block, this block had two thirds of approval surrounding it. Obviously from perspective of any future block, it, it also has two thirds of approval surrounding it. All right, okay. So that's all the implementation details. That's it for the finality gadget. Any immediate questions? Uh, what's the difference between pre-vote and pre-commit? Right. I don't really understand. Uh, okay, so the question is, what's the difference between pre-vote and pre-commit? So let's very quickly go through them again. Uh, from perspective of a particular tip, so this is tip, a particular some block has quorum pre-vote. Uh, if uh, uh, so, so, so consider all the approvals which exist uh, in the in the ancestry of the block. So the block has a quorum pre-vote if it has two thirds of witnesses having approval which surrounds it effectively, right? Uh, and we will call the first block from perspective of which uh, B had quorum pre-vote as QV of B. So, so when this block was a tip, B did not have quorum pre-vote. But when this block became a tip, uh, now B had a quorum pre-vote, right. right? And so from perspective of every consecutive block, B will also have quorum pre-vote, but we will refer to QV of B as the first block which, uh, which had quorum pre-vote on B. Uh, something has a quorum pre-commit if both the block itself and the first block which had quorum pre-vote or any block which has quorum pre-vote on B uh, have two-thirds of, of approvals, approvals from two-thirds plus one witnesses surrounding both of them simultaneously. So you need like pretty wide approvals which surround both of them. Right, so, so then the block is called to have a quorum pre-commit. Right, and so quorum pre-vote is, is very trivial to compute because all you need to say, like you have those intervals, right? And you just need to, like, you, you just do like this, what is called sw swiping. Sweeping. Sweeping, yes, yeah, sweeping, sweeping line, whatever. Sweeping pointer. Yeah, you just have the sweeping pointer, which goes from uh, from the most recent block to the, to the least recent one, maintaining those approvals. And for a block, you can very easily say if it has two thirds of approval surrounding it. Right, but to compute quorum pre-commit, uh, when for some block you you, re you recognize it has quorum pre-vote, you need to say, of those two thirds of approvals, more than two thirds of approvals that surround this block, is it the case that at least two thirds plus one of them also surround uh, the most recent quorum pre-vote from perspective of this block, right? And so to do that, you just maintain the pointer to the first block in the ancestry, which does not have two thirds surrounding it, right? And if the most recent quorum pre-vote from perspective of this block is to the right from the pointer, uh, then you know that block has quorum pre-commit, right? Because you know that there are two thirds of the approvals that are surrounding currently this block, two thirds plus one of them uh, or, or of number of witnesses have approval surrounding also this block. Cool. Any other questions? Yay. Thank you. Thank you for watching. <laughs>